So with all Nola Fane's experience and knowledge around suspension bushings, 43 years of it, it's only logical to me that they would expand into other associated and complementary components. And none better than this little gem here, the camber bolt. Now, what is it and what do you need it for? Well, let's just talk camber for a minute. Here it is demonstrated here, positive and negative. So if I'm the car, here's my front tyres, negative camber in at the top, positive camber out at the top. Now, manufacturers will call for a very tight specification on camber for a variety of reasons. The suspension components and geometry, the market that the car's going into, the weight of the car, a whole raft of things. But camber moves around. So what Nolithane have done is made these cute little bolts that, in this instance, you can see fits into a strut there, into the hole there. And what it is, it's a little, if I unwind it, a little offset cam on the bolt there that you can see. And what I also like is this lovely little indicator on top here. And if I turn it around, there's these little sharp spikes that dig into the metal so that doesn't turn. So they've thought about all the stuff in some detail, I will say. Now, you also need to know that they make this for a range of applications that cover 12 mil, 14 mil, 15 and 17. So that's pretty well going to cover everything you're going to need. How much adjustment? Well, around about 1.5 degrees of adjustment you can get out of one of these. Now, if you need more than that, I can tell you're in a world of pain. You've got bigger problems. In fact, come and have a look at my picture here. You can see if you look at that bolt from the end all the way up, you can see it's kind of offset like that. Now, I know what you're waiting for. Why do I need camber adjustment bolts? Well, you know what? For many, many years, vehicle manufacturers have been making cars adjustable in terms of camber. And in more recent times, a lot of manufacturers have stopped doing that, particularly imported, imported cars. Now, I don't believe in that and I don't think that's a particularly good thing. Why? Well, let's just go through a few of them. I can't believe when we talk about a roadway in Australia or anywhere in the world, they're all sloped like that so the rain runs off it, it's safe, and your car tyres sit like that. Now, depending on whether you're left-hand drive or right-hand drive, do you really think an importer or manufacturer of vehicles that sends them all around the world to both right and left-hand drive applications would have the camber settings right for every country in the world? Do you think every manufacturer is the same? Do you reckon I could go out in the car park there and put my camber gauge on every car and it would still be sitting on its original specifications? No way. What about after you have an accident and the car's moved around? What about when the torsional rigidity of the car moves around as they do? They're just not going to be the same. What about if someone's used inferior aftermarket products in there and it's moved? And how about a car after it's done 10 or 15,000 kilometres and all the suspension and its bushings all are settled into place and it's moved? And it only has to be like 0.25 or half a degree out and it will have a bigger impact on your wheel or your tyre wear than tyre pressures, toe out, toe in. I mean, camber's right up there with tyre wear. So, for me, if you work in the wheel alignment industry, the tyre industry, my tip would be I would have a range of those sitting in your shelf to help your customer out.